This program is brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with Eau Claire County. This program is simulcast on WRFPLP 101.9. Welcome to this meeting of the Eau Claire County Board of Supervisors. I'm uh, pleased to call this meeting to order here on April 18th, 2017. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of reflection by Supervisor Kevin Stelges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, over the last couple months, uh, my wife and I have done a couple road trips and a uh, moment for a lot of reflection. I'm sure a lot of you have done the traditional road trips as well, but we drove down through the American Southwest and toured a little bit of the West and then came back through the Midwest and saw a lot of desolate plains and a lot of mountains and a lot of big cities. And as we drove back home uh, and we approached into Eau Claire County, I just had this feeling of, ah, I'm finally home, you know, and it just felt so great. And so I started to ask myself, why is that? Why does it feel good to come back here versus touring around and seeing all these other interesting places in the, in the country? And that got me to thinking that it probably is that our community is so multidimensional, where so many other things that you see elsewhere are kind of one-dimensional in the community. So that got me thinking about this Eau Claire County seal that's right behind our chairman and our uh, county clerk there. And every time we're in this room, we look at that, and I said, you know, I need to study that thing a little bit more, because that's pretty interesting. Maybe it really is representative of our county. So I would ask everybody to direct their attention to this for a moment, and actually with the help of the county clerk, I just got a little bit more education as to what all this means. But it's, it's pretty darn interesting <coughs> that the, in the center of that seal there, it kind of represents the dimensions of our county. In the upper left-hand corner, we have the, the gears there that sort of represent industry and commerce. And down below that, the forestry, which is such an important part of our community that not only provides forest, forestry resources that provide income to us and help clean our air, but also provides recreation, not only for those who can afford it, but it really provides recreation for everybody in the county. What a great thing to have so close to us. And we have agriculture that provides good, healthy food to us and also provides local uh, food opportunities that many communities do not have. And of course, from all of those, we carve off a little bit and we support uh, the arts and education in the upper right-hand corner. And so, you know, like when I was traveling through West Texas, and it's just a desolate country that's nothing but sort of wasteland, and it's all based on oil extraction. And the people there are, you know, they're giving everything from their land and they're getting almost nothing in return. The people who live there who are actual residents struggle for a day-to-day -day living. And we don't do that. We have a community where many of the things that we produce and that we enjoy in our commerce actually come back to us. And as I go through some of the bigger cities that I traveled through, it struck me that here are these big cities, they take everything and they get it from all the other areas in the country and they don't necessarily give back a lot. So we, I think, need to always recognize and look at this seal and say, we are really a fortunate community in that we have this balance in such close proximity and uh, just uh, give that reflection every day. And Janet, uh, if you wanted to touch upon what some of those other symbols mean, that's mm -hmm. great too. Uh, it's pretty cool. I don't have a microphone, but I just want to point out that the Five, they're called floor leaves. Floor leaves. Floor leaves. There's five of them here, and that represents the cities and the villages in Eau Claire County. And then there's 13 of them here, and that represents the uh, townships in Eau Claire County. The 1856 is when was, uh, Wisconsin, the state of Wisconsin declared Eau Claire County, which had been a town in Chippewa County before. <laughs> and, I like and, that, the, and the voice of the out, that's just clear water. And I like to think that those two wavy things that go past that glossy Eau Claire represent the Chippewa and the Eau Claire Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. That's great. <laughs> Thank you very much, Supervisor Stelges. Appreciate it. That was very, very interesting and uh, thoughtful. Appreciate it. 
If supervisors would please take your keypads and indicate your presence here this evening, and we'll establish our quorum. Uh, let's see. Uh, Supervisor Moore is here, I believe. Is in there? But will it Beckfield? I know Supervisor Beckfield. I think is under the weather. Again, Supervisor Henning, if you'd redo that, and Cordy's not here. And <coughs> Supervisor <coughs> Supervisor Willett, if you yep. oh you did, did it there. Did. Great. Okay, so we're established. We have 25 present. We have a quorum. We'll move on to uh, uh, correction of the journal proceedings or approval of the journal proceedings from April 5th. Uh, are there any suggested changes to the journal proceedings as drafted? I see none. I'd entertain a motion to approve those. Motion by Supervisor Smyer with a second by Supervisor Henning. Any discussion? I see none. All in favor of that motion to approve the journal proceedings as drafted, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Uh, moving on to the public comment period. This is an opportunity at each meeting for members of the public to address the board. We have several who'd like to speak this evening. Um, we'd uh, appreciate it if folks would uh, limit their remarks to three minutes. And uh, welcome to those of you that are interested in speaking. So we'll start with Joe Heil. And the microphone should be all set up. Is that, uh, mm -hmm. you want to point that down? It looks like it might not be. Oh, yeah. Just thanks. And uh, Rory Schutte would be on deck. So, uh, good evening and welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Joe Heil. I'm a 30-year resident of Eau Claire County, and I'm here tonight to present our feelings for some of the veterans that can't be here about the Veterans Tribute. Um, thank you for taking a few minutes to talk with you regarding the Veterans Tributes of Eau Claire County. Looking around to other counties and cities in our area, you will find many of these cities, communities, that have paid tribute to their many veterans with pride. It is time that we in Eau Claire and Eau Claire County do the same. We need to honor our county veterans, both men and women, who have proudly served to protect our freedom from the Civil War to our present conflicts of today. There's no better way than to show our support for that tribute. My understanding that Eau Claire has a great history that started with the Civil War, and we need to make all of, all of that information available to our people who will visit this tribute, especially our children. My guess is that many of you have relatives from the past that have served to protect our freedom rights. You will honor them and all veterans who have served from the Eau Claire and Eau Claire County. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Rory Schutte is next, and then uh, Kay Olson to follow. Good evening and welcome. You're welcome, sir. My name is Rory Schutte. I belong to many veterans organizations and I'm here to on behalf of the Eau Claire Tribute Foundation that we want to get started here in Eau Claire County. I just want to say it'd be it's if you if it's approved because uh, we want to honor our veterans here in the county and let our children know our heritage and what we do. Let them learn from elementary up to the present, so, and it'll be a great tribute, and I want to thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, Kay Olson and then Angela Duschlander to follow. So, good evening. Hi. I'm a veteran of 26 years. I'm also a Gold Star mother, and I live in the city of Eau Claire. When I retired from the military, I picked Eau Claire to live in family both all three directions easy to get to when driving around Wisconsin you see all the small towns that we have have these great veterans tributes like Bloomer Clintonville Ellsworth Wilson then you get to Eau Claire a very small tribute is located outside the courthouse we need to show our veterans that we support them 100 percent here in the Eau Claire uh, County and, and this also includes our veterans that have passed away also. Also give our young people a place to go, the tribute will, and they will learn about our history here in the Eau Claire area as we have planned the tribute to do accordingly starting with Old Abe, our eagle. 
It also then can give them a chance to reflect as they walk along our path and see the different um, areas that we have highlighted each part of our war. We will have a place to go and celebrate all of our military holidays, which now we kind of look around for because I am on the Patriotic Council also. I believe it will be a great addition to the Eau Claire surroundings and our area. I just do not want our veterans and our fallen heroes to be forgotten, and this is one of the strongest ways that we can remember them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Angela Duschlander and then Dan Ziegler to follow. Good evening. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Hello, my name is Angela Deutschlander. I'm an Eau Claire resident and an Air Force veteran. I'm, I'm going to come at this from more of um, an idea of the educational aspect of the park. Um, Eau Claire has been such a, has such a rich history of sending our sons and daughters to war, all the way back to the Civil War. And it's such an interesting to story to tell that a lot of our residents don't know. So what we're going to really focus on is educating our community and our school-age kids, high school, middle school, even as far as up as UW Eau Claire. Um, they, everybody would be able to come through and really experience not only the fact-based information of each war that has happened since the Civil War, but we're going to intertwine actual stories from our veterans and their families and how that really affected them. And it's really going to bring that history to life. So I think that it's just a really imperative educational tool that we need to implement. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, Dan Ziegler, so welcome. And uh, Mr. Ziegler is the last person who signed up. I'll ask if there's anyone else from the public who'd like to speak this evening. Um, okay. Welcome. Good evening. Might be a little redundant for some of the things that have already been said, but I guess I feel it and need saying anyhow. I want to thank this governing body for considering the Eau Claire County Veterans Tribute Project for development. This area has a very high, long history of its sons and daughters serving our country in both peacetime and war. From past, present, and yes, future conflicts, their sacrifice has held our country together and kept us free. So it is right and just that we finally recognize that sacrifice and consider this project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate yep. it. And thanks to all um, who uh, testified. Are you coming up? Uh, Dave Zane, welcome to you. Good evening to you. Here's my registration slip. Okay. In Madison all day, so I was at the VA hospital. I hit my head three weeks ago. I got a slight brain concussion. Maybe that made an improvement. <laughs> Uh, I have a handout for everybody, and if you would take, uh, I wrote it up on the way back on my motorcycle, of course. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I just want to maybe cover a couple things. Could maybe uh, some, somebody help me out a little bit here? Yeah. Rick, just, maybe? You, can here. Give, you can give them to me and I'll, I'll take them. Oh, okay. There should be some for their spectators, too. Sure. Uh, the bottom line is that this goes far beyond just a veterans tribute uh, trail. It goes far beyond that. And what you see, what we wrote up here, is that this indeed could be the bright shining star for the whole region, not just the Chippewa Valley but the whole state of Wisconsin. When you look at all the other, and we got a, vet, we got a Armed Forces Appreciation Week, Semper Fi, uh, Armed Forces Appreciation Week for six days, May 15th to the 20th, and what we're highlighting is a lot of different patriotic places around here in a lot of different respects. Bottom, bottom line is that what you're doing in Eau Claire, contingent upon approval of the county board, Mr. Chairman, is that you are, are doing something that's going to command attention to all these other areas. There's 57 stops here. Some of them are replicated. But, but you're commanding attention for not only state, regional conventions, conferences, and rallies. You're looking at national conventions to be held in Eau Claire, especially what you have did with the Confluence Project and, and the lodging and all the other projects. You are building the base for Eau Claire, this tribute trail to be the bright shining star, the nucleus, because people got to stay in Eau Claire for lodging when they come to a, a large national convention. This is it. 
You are doing something for historic, cultural, ethnic, and religious preservation. You're doing something for tourism and economic development. I mean, and besides, we're going to have fun. When you look at one of the sites on here, and, and Supervisor Colleen Bates has already offered to ride on a motorcycle, so that we're going to have fun. <laughs> I mean, she's going to ride on a motorcycle, but you better stand in line, because she gets to run that line. I don't know if anybody else will get a chance, but <laughs> Wheels of Liberty is going to be offering rides on those whole six days. And, and I, I took enough time, but, but God bless you for all you do. And this is not just for veterans. What you're going to notice when we do this living heritage Legacy Tour, the Armed Forces of America, uh, we, uh, Armed Forces Appreciation Week. We're recognizing the home front heroes. The home front heroes are those individuals like you got in this couple, uh, many of you in this board and this audience are not veterans, but you serve every bit as honorably as veterans. Veterans groups and auxiliaries and patriotic groups are honoring the home front heroes. One of the big wheels, many of the big wheels behind us, Mark Beckfield is just one. And uh, uh, the County Veterans Service Office, uh, Office, I can't say enough about. But the home front heroes, the living legacy, the heritage, and what we're going to be revealing during that tour is veterans inspiring vitality in the Chippewa Valley. And one of those individuals on here, and, I, and when I was writing this on the way back from Madison, Cliff Chatterson. World War II veteran. Does anybody remember Cliff Chatterson? For heaven's sakes. I mean, he's on Veterans Inspiring Vitality and Chippewa Valley. God bless each and every one of you. And if you're on this tour on Friday and Saturday when we attempt to put the, uh, the, the Indian battlefield up by Prairie Farm as a national battlefield site, we're going to be filming for the movie Dead Man's Hand. And you wonder why I haven't shaved or cut my hair in a couple of years, you'll see why. So if you want to be on the movie, you got to be there Friday and especially Saturday. God bless you and thank you for your positive vote. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you very much, Mr. Zine, and thank you everyone else who testified. I'll ask one more time if there's anyone from the public who'd like to speak this evening. I know we have a number of veterans, so thank you all for being here. We also have a number of scouts from Troop 34 here this evening, so welcome to all of our Boy Scouts. And I'd ask, uh, I know it's out of order, but if there's no objection, I'd like to uh, take this uh, Veterans Tribute uh, Resolution up at this time. And I see no objection, so I'll ask the clerk to read let me get you on the jet. To read uh, file six. Supporting creation of a veteran tribute in Eau Claire County. And may I have a motion, please? A motion by Supervisor Chilson, with a second by Supervisor uh, Conlin, and an explanation by Supervisor uh, Bates. Thank you. <laughs> I knew it. I had the mic on. So. <laughs> Sounds good. Obviously, as you can see from the passion of the individuals who've been before us this evening, this is something that, that the community needs indeed to become involved in and behind. I can't think of any greater tribute that would surely uh, demonstrate how much this community loves the people who have served this country. Uh, this has been about two years in the process of coming to this point I'm sorry that Mark Beckfield isn't here this evening because he has been such an advocate for this project and also very, very intricately involved. Uh, the Veterans Tribute is actually on uh, the Forest Street Greenway. The plans look exquisite. The, the, certainly the logic behind it seems sound. Uh, there's an opportunity for people to begin to contribute towards this, towards the foundation, the Veterans Tribute Foundation, and I certainly would encourage people to do that. Uh, the goal is approximately $2 million, but above all, I think it's extremely appropriate for this body to support this particular project. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation, and I should note that uh, Supervisor Beckel has been involved with this, working with Tim Moore, our veteran service officer, and Mark under the weather this evening, so he had let us know a, a few hours ago that he probably wasn't going to be able to make it. But with that, I'll open it up for any uh, discussion or questions. Any discussion or questions before we vote? It appears you are ready to vote, so Supervisors would please... Oh, I'm sorry, Supervisor Cronin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want 
I want it to be known and recognized. Dan Ziegler was the main push behind this for many years, for the last few years. I want to give him the recognition. Thank you very much. And any uh, Supervisor Schroffnagel? The green space is in my district, so I full heartedly support the project coming forward and look forward to working with many, many of these um, veterans groups uh, from now until it's done. And thank you for having the foresight to uh, choose the Forest Street green space. Thank you. Anything else? I see none. So if supervisors would please take your keypads and vote. The motion before us is uh, it's resolution six, supporting creation of a veteran tribute in the Oak, in Eau Claire County. And that motion is adopted unanimously. So once again, thanks to all the veterans and everybody that's been here. And, uh, and, and Tim Moore was here earlier, and Adam from uh, Veteran Service Officers. So thank you all. Um, I, I recognize voice yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Moving uh, back on our agenda, uh, once a year, um, the annual report is provided by the county administrator. So welcome, Catherine. Thank you. For the uh, annual report, or annual message. And just one moment here. And would you ask them to move this to the... Good evening. Thank you for allowing me some time to share with you our accomplishments from 2016. It's been a busy year, and the team members, meaning all of our department heads, the staff that work with them, the board members who have labored with them on oversight committees, have done a lot of very good work in 2016, and really that's what we're here tonight to highlight, is what we have accomplished, and then to take a very quick look at where we intend to go in 2017. I think that one of the things that you'll see as we go through this presentation is that the work that we have done mirrors the values that we as a county have said are important to us. And that goes back to our strategic plan um, document where we list out what those values actually are. And they are about using and managing and planning our assets. It's about being fiscally responsible, responsive to our citizens, open and accountable and innovative. And I believe that you will see that all of those things were part of what we accomplished in 2016. This slide simply goes over what our mission is, the dual function of county government as an arm of state government as well as a local municipal corporation. And it has some very quick statistics regarding what the overall tax rate is. And it shows that this body has been responsive to citizen need and at the same time conservative in its approach and has therefore um, been a friend to the taxpayer as well. Our structure is very diverse. I put this up here for members of the community so that they can see how all of the different parts of our organization work together. The work of the board is accomplished through the oversight committees, which are at the top of the screen. And then below that, you see the different departmental areas that are part of county government that carry out the wishes of not only the oversight committees, but the board as a whole. Here's our annual budget in a snapshot, and I put both 2017 and 2015 on there to show where we've been, what we proposed for 2017, and where we were in 2016, so that you can see three years in a row. And we'll continue to pull together some of that historical perspective so that you actually have it. Um, one of the key things that you see in 2016, of course, is that um, we had a slight decrease in our overall number of FTEs. I don't know if you can read that well in the bottom. We went from 529 to 525, and that's part of the work that we've been doing as we look at our operations and how we're structured. Um, it is neither good nor bad. In fact, one of the things that you'll be considering tonight is the of additional um, 
workforce to meet the needs of the Comprehensive Community Services Program, which is a new philosophy and approach taken by the Human Services Department as far as service delivery goes. So the numbers simply provide a snapshot of the resources that you as a board have allocated to us as an organization to work to meet your mission, your goals, your objectives. The major revenues that we use, just as a real quick summary, the majority of them um, are coming from property tax levy. If you were to actually look at this over time, you would see that that was not always the case. Historically, county government has been funded in the largest part by grants and aids. But due to grants and aids that are stagnant and or depleting, that is no longer the case, and the county property tax levy has taken over as the single largest funding source for county government operations. Our expenses by category show a little bit and give a really good picture of what we are. We are a service organization. 36% of our cost, which is that large gray area, is monies and resources that come in and are sent back out to the citizens of Eau Claire County. We do that through the use of a workforce, which 30% of which is for our wages and benefits, and the other 12 is benefits. So wages and benefits combined is 42%. We are a service industry. Everything that we do um, in this year, at, we take a look at from the standpoint of our strategic plan. And the strategic plan was put in place by the county board when they took office in the beginning of 2016, and we continue to work through that. We have the three main areas, and again, ensuring financial stability, innovation and adaption, and improving our collaboration. And one of the things you're going to see on some of the key points in the different departmental areas is how not only we're doing this with some of the key goals and objectives that you as a board have defined, but also within the various departmental areas. We've also asked, when you start looking at the annual reports that each of the departments has prepared, they have taken the time to look at how the work that they are doing fits into these buckets and how it actually aligns with your vision and the direction that you are providing for this county. Our public services are categorized into seven different areas. Here they are, and I'm just going to very briefly touch on this screen because we'll get right into some of the key points in each one of these broad categories of service. For 2016, health and social services, the integration of our children's court services with the Department of Human Services that is specifically, specifically targeting the programming that we provide and looking at the way that we philosophically want to provide that programming into the future. We are hoping that we can actually improve service levels by this alignment and at the same time potentially affect the bottom line of those services. Stepping up is the program that was sponsored by the National Association of Counties and that we are working on in a number of different areas in county government as well as in the shared area of county and city health. Human services are using a new organizational model that is focused on wellness and recovery and that includes a behavioral health services division as well as I mentioned before the comprehensive community services programming which is designed to be a wraparound program that meets the needs of individuals and helps them become productive and um, vital citizens once again. The Nurse Family Partnership also completed its first full year in its service serving high-risk patients that is an evidence-based decision-making program that significantly improves outcomes for first-time parents and their children. Transportation and Public Works has also seen some significant progress in 2016. The airport had a construction of a 10-stall tea hanger. You saw the oral annual report, I believe, just last month from Charity Zick, so she provided a lot of detail on that. Highway had an amazing year. Um, they 
uh, increased investment in our capital program along with finance and budget and others with the specific goal of infusing capital into that program so we could bring all of our programs up to an acceptable level and I believe that we are well on our way to doing that by increasing increasing and improving our PACER scores and at the same time bringing down the cost to maintain the roadways. We have used social media and the website for communicating current conditions to the public as well as some of the new technologies, anti-icing, anti pretreatment technologies, as far as maintenance work, the stabilization full depth reclamation model, as well as cold in place recycling are two technologies that have significantly reduced the overall cost for Eau Claire County to maintain lane miles, which means that our roads are going to be in better condition for a longer period of time and allow us to bring all of our roadways up to the level of service that we would like to have them at. The um, department has also used a route optimization planning tool that is prepared by the state and it uses GIS technology. We'll talk about that in just a little bit as well. But that technology allowed them to actually take their routes and significantly reduce the number of routes. I believe it's from 21 to 16. And the fewer routes, the fewer drivers you need, the fewer resources in terms of trucks to actually provide that service. And so again, a great efficiency for the highway department in 2016. In the public safety and judicial realm, um, the joint effort with the city of Eau Claire continues and they've fully implemented the fingerprinting services, which allows us to obtain fingerprints in a timely and efficient manner at the point where we have individuals leaving the court so that we're sure to get those fingerprints. Um, they've made re renovations to the range. They've had and been part of the collaborative effort to assist with the mental health issues, stepping up that I mentioned before, as well as work that they've done in collaboration with the Department of Human Services, um, with reentry and with work on the economic support. So we actually have some of our DHS staff, DHS staff directly working with our jail and the population in the jail to ensure their success after they leave their stay here. The other big piece of the work in 2016 was law enforcement records management software. You'll often refer heard that referred to as Spillman. Um, and what that does is it is a new system that will actually allow significant efficiencies and the collection of data and information regarding law enforcement. It uses the GIS or that geographical data as a base so that we can begin to learn more and actually take that data, analyze that data, and potentially have a more efficient and effective response to crime and its resolution in our communities. Conservation and economic development, leisure and education. The dam work in Lake Eau Claire was completed as the major repairs in Lake Altoona. The park's improvements included the Lake Eau Claire facility, the playground at Coon Fork, parking lot improvements at Lowe's Creek. The county last year also began the PACE program, which is the Property Assessed Clean Energy Program. It's an economic development tool. Eau Claire County took the lead on that to get that program up and running across the state of Wisconsin on behalf of individual businesses who want to invest in their infrastructure. And it gives them the motivation by providing a funding source that is not necessarily limited to the duration of the time they would own that property. In general government, um, some of the major accomplishments, the board created the strategic plan that we have been working off of and has provided the guidance necessary to keep us moving forward. We've done some continuous process improvement work through the development of various internal controls and we'll continue that work. The board adopted a living wage ordinance, and you heard a report on that last month regarding the status of that. We will continue to monitor that and provide input to you. We've done a lot of work around our culture and leadership development of our staff. They are our number one resource and our most valued resource, and it is imperative that we take the time to provide them those resources they need to continue their professional and personal development. 
Um, our Human Resources Committee is developing a six-pronged strategy to continue to address the needs that are associated with recru recruiting and retaining a quality workforce. We've also made some significant process changes and have really pushed the move in electronic records. And they are addressing those in all of our administrative functions, from human resources to the Corporation Council, um, our area of finance. And so we are making progress in all of that. Also, the PSC grant, that is the um, grant that the county has used to expand rural broadband and an expansion to Lake Eau Claire was made in 2016. That is another way in which the county is able to collaboratively work with other local governments and the state to improve the overall infrastructure and service to the citizens of Eau Claire County. One of the things that I looked at as we were looking at this, and I think that there was also some um, information that came back from law enforcement and judiciary that they wanted to see some final numbers on where we're at, because you can't talk about 2016 without talking about the fact that we were in a recovery mode. We were recovering from an embezzlement. And I believe that we, as an organization, have taken the necessary steps to recover. The question that came forward is how much in actual physical dollars have we spent on that? The chart that you see before you shows that, and at the bottom bottom the net loss and or cost. So you have the expenses at the top that the county incurred, including the actual loss amount. And then um, we also have the total payments and deposits that were made on behalf of the county. A number of staff worked many, many hours to see this issue resolved. And they did so very professionally. And I would like to commend their work because we don't actually have all of their hours categorized in here or actually accounted for as part of this. But their work was what allowed us as an organization to recoup the million dollars in an insurance um, payment. It is unusual for an organization to actually have any success in recoupment after this type of situation. And so I think that credit goes to the many staff, Greg Moore, who led the work to um, to not only run the investigation, but then to share with the public and maintain an openness and honesty with everyone as we move forward. So really the key message from all of this is that we are in a process of restructuring, retooling, and reorganizing. Change has become our new byword. It is what we do. Um, one of the things that you'll see when you look through the annual reports is that they looked at a number of macroeconomic factors and ascertained how it is we are serving and what in the terms of what we are doing and how effective we are both and you will see that as you look at the annual reports they have been posted on our website and I will leave you with that link tonight and I will also email it to you one of the things that we also look at is what are called steep trends those things that are happening in society technology our economy environment and politically that affect what it is we do. And oftentimes it's the macro elements that actually drive more of what we end up doing in county government than we would like to than we would like to say. We don't have a lot of control over many things. And so one of the other things that you will see this year in the annual reports is that all of our departments really took some time to talk about those steep trends as part of their narrative. And we're hoping that that becomes part of the conversation as we move forward as well, because that will help inform your policy decisions as a board. So looking ahead, very briefly, some of the things that are happening in 2017, we're building off of the work we've done in 2016, and it was good work. Um, I do not have final budget numbers for you yet, but things are tracking very well. It looks like we are going to be in the black on all sides of it. So um, very good work, again, from the various departments um, within our organization. 2017, a property master plan, some real property analysis to look at the assets that we have. Again, going back to our strategic plan, being responsible for the assets that we do own, and looking at virtual workspaces as an alternative way of getting the job done. On the economic development front, we're looking at continuing the work that was begun in the economic summit 
in 2016 by having more collaborative work done through the various organizations that represent Eau Claire County. That is at a regional level with the 10 county region. It is at the local level with the city of Eau Claire, city of Altoona, and our other local partners. And so we are hopeful that we will get some good progress on that and help to find a strategic direction for our economic development efforts. Wood Communications is part of the work that the Wisconsin Counties Association, Association is doing with Momentum West, and they are looking at seriously beginning a strategy to identify the worker shortage that is not only a problem in Eau Claire County, it is throughout the state of Wisconsin. We are going to continue to use our information systems to improve our access and openness. Our OpenGov deployment will be finalized in 2017. We put some money in the 2017 budget to do some communication planning so that we can be a better organization at, plan at communicating internally and externally. E-filing of court records is also an uh, underway and actually I believe it's going well. Um, I think that uh, the work done with Eau Claire County highlighted some things and they've made some system improvements and that process is going well. We're also ensuring that our technological systems are able to meet tomorrow's needs and that is with having appropriate GIS layers and base layers so that we can power other information systems. We're exploring the use of new technology and methods, again, the CCS program and the e-filing that is in all of our departments. We're working on staff and team development and we'll continue to do the work around defining the type of culture we want. And it really goes back to linking back to the type of workforce that is going to be needed for the next years to come. One of the things that was defined by the Division of Workforce Development when they presented in Madison at the WCA conference was that the skill sets for the workers of tomorrow are changing and so we are ramping up to make sure that our workforce is ready for that challenge. And we're exploring the use of res other resources that we currently have. We continue to look at structural reviews um, and, that, and, and communities of interest. One of the big areas that we've identified for 2017 is emergency and risk management to look at that programming and see if there is some community of interest there or some ways that we should potentially restructure. Again, GIS and the building of that becomes increasingly important. We just met today with the city of Eau Claire to talk about the combination of our maps. And so that process is working and moving forward as we continue to collaborate in initiatives that were set by the Shared Services Committee. And we are doing a communication center analysis that is a shared 911 response that is um, shared between the city and the county. Our evidence-based operations continue, and we will continue to use evidence-based methodologies as we move forward. We will also continue to look for collaborations, and some of those are listed there. I will not read them. And with that, I thank you for your time and attention. May I ask if there are questions? Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Catherine, and thanks to all the department heads. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Catherine about the uh, annual report at this time? Anything uh, is reachable any time, of course, but uh, Supervisor Olson. Thank you. I have a question about uh, the loss and recovery. And yes, sir. Uh, the, the million dollar question. Now, is that something that the uh, Budget and Finance Committee is going to come back to us to make a recommendation on what to do with that money to pay down debt service or reduce what we borrowed this year? Is that going to happen, or has it already been decided? It, it has not been decided. The, technically, it reverts to general funds, so it's currently part of the general fund, so it would be invested similar to the other investments within county operations. Now, how that may or may not be allocated is likely to be part of the 2018 budget process, where they would decide if they want to do something with that. They may want to leave it as part of the general fund balance, because they'll do a complete analysis of the potential cash flow needs, making sure that we have the appropriate amounts of reserves, and so it will become part of that discussion. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, Good question. Who, who, what happened to that money? Oh, what, no, we, we have it invested. Thank you. Uh, Supervisor DeLuca. 
I'm sorry, but did you say that you were going to share that annual report with us? The link. I will give you the, the electronic link. If there is anyone who prefers paper copies, we would be happy to provide them. We were not going to provide them as a matter of course, but if you would like them, we will get them to you. But we have a very easy to use link, so you can just click on the report that you'd like to look at and take a look at it. So, Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you for your time this evening. We'll see any other questions. Uh, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, moving on, uh, we've got written reports there, the contingency fund report and the overtime report for the first quarter, as well as uh, some independent agency reports from Western Dairyland, the Board of Health, and on your desk, the uh, Innovation Center as well. Uh, any questions on any of those documents? I see none. We'll move on to presentation of petitions, claims, and communications. I'll uh, take up the proclamations in a moment uh, when we take up announcements. And I know uh, Supervisor uh, Gatlin had an announcement this evening. Thank you, Chair Moore. Um, I just wanted to bring up on June 4th, the Women's Business Conference will be happening, their 14th annual. It um, assists women entrepreneurs through training as well as one-to-one. -one. They're excited because they have a bigger venue and a better agenda that should be able to accommodate more vendors. Their new location is um, uh, the new student union at UWBC. So that is June 8th. Um, if you know somebody interested but in need of scholarship, there's a telephone number I can give you or you can go to their website or you can ask me. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Uh, I've got one announcement before the proclamations and that is to share the good news uh, that Eau Claire County was recognized by United Way as one of the top best business best 25 for uh, fundraising uh, or donations to United Way by our employees. So many employees contribute and it was over $25,000 uh, that were contributed by our various employees. So uh, there were actually uh, four different awards in four different categories. So uh, good news about the generosity of our employees uh, contributing to United Way and those efforts. Uh, we do have two resolutions. I will read one pretty much in full and one in an abbreviated version and afterwards I uh, entertain a motion to adopt the proclamation. So first of all, uh, proclaiming uh, National Co County Government Month for 2017. Whereas Eau Claire County and all counties take pride in our responsibility to protect and enhance the health, welfare, and safety of our residents in efficient and cost-effective ways. And whereas, through National Association of Counties President Brian Deloge's Brilliant Ideas at Work initiative, NACO is encouraging counties to focus on the most innovative programs and services that strengthen communities. And whereas, in order to remain healthy, vibrant, and safe, America's counties provide public health, justice, safety, infrastructure, transportation, technology, environmental stewardship, and economic services to play a key role in everything from residents' daily commutes to emergency response. And whereas Eau Claire County utilizes innovative approaches to building and maintaining roads, addressing mental health, and addressing incarceration needs as three examples of improving service and outcomes at the local level, now therefore be it resolved that I, Greg Moore, Eau Claire County Board Chair, do hereby proclaim April 2017 is National County Government Month. Uh, the second resolution is proclaiming May 2017 to be Older Americans Month. Whereas Eau Claire County includes older Americans who richly contribute to our community. And whereas we acknowledge that what it means to quote unquote age has changed for the better. And whereas Eau Claire County is committed to supporting older adults as they take charge of their health, explore new opportunities and activities, and focus on interdependence. And whereas Eau Claire County can provide opportunities to enrich the lives of individuals of all ages by involving older adults in the redefinition of aging in our community, promoting home and community-based services that support independent living, encouraging older adults to speak up for themselves and others, and providing opportunities for older adults to share their experiences now, therefore, I, Greg Moore, Chair of the Eau Claire County Board of Supervisors, do hereby proclaim May 2017 to be Older Americans Month. 
And with that, I'd entertain a motion to adopt uh, both of those motions. A motion by Supervisor Lavelle, second by uh, Supervisor Pagomas. Any questions or comments or discussion on either of those proclamations? If not, all in favor of those that motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion is adopted unanimously. Thank you. Uh, moving on to first reading of ordinances uh, by committee, um, file number one. This ordinance makes many changes in Title 12 of the Ophir County Code and one change in Title 1 of the Code. We'll bring that back at our next meeting on May 2nd, two weeks from tonight. File number two. To repeal Section 2.05.035 of the Code, Program Coordinating Committee, to amend Section 2.44.020B of the Code, Department, Divisions, and Attached Boards and Commissions, to repeal Section 2.44.030E of the Code, Department, Divisions, and Attached Boards and Commissions. And likewise, we'll bring that back at our next meeting. Uh, first reading of ordinances and resolutions by members, file number 10. Securing state funding to support communicable disease control for population health. And I'll uh, refer that to the administration committee. Uh, moving on to file 10, uh, or I mean agenda item 10, file number 4. Supporting continued funding of the essential air service, the EAS program. Uh, may I have a motion please? A motion by Supervisor Olson, second by Supervisor Schroffnagel, and an explanation by Supervisor Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as we found out a couple of weeks ago when um, Charity Zeke was here giving her report, her airport report, um, President Trump's proposed budget for <coughs> fiscal year 18 eliminates a funding program called the Essential Air Service Program. And this is money that comes from, does not come from taxes, it comes from user fees, which provide subsidies to airlines in order to give them um, the ability to utilize smaller airports, such as Chippewa Valley Regional Airport. This cut, if this budget goes through as proposed, this cut would negatively affect the Chippewa Valley, not just the airport, the Chippewa Valley as a whole. Um, imagine having no commercial air service, full service in Minneapolis. Many elements in the Chippewa Valley rely on the airport, and it's not just flying to Charlotte, like I'm going to do in the morning. Hey. It's, um, you know, we, we depend on the airport for tourism, that whole industry. We reply, we rely on the airport for economic development. I would think companies would be hesitant to move to an area that has no air service. Our whole economic health relies on the airport. And commercial ventures in this valley rely heavily on the airport. And the airport is very busy. Granted, there are not a lot of commercial flights in and out of the airport, but there are many people who rely upon the services provided by the airport, and it would be very difficult to continue to, to provide those services without a commercial airline. Um, it is important that we send this message to our president and our Congress that this is an important program and should not be cut. And it, it baffles me why it would even be proposed when it is not tax funded. It's user fee funded. So I urge your support, and I would like to add that phone calls and emails are also welcome. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, and the Airport Commission also adopted this resolution, so I'd like to recognize Supervisor Olson, our 
representative on the, the airport commission. Thank you, Chair Moore. Uh, thank you for uh, Supervisor Clark. Excellent uh, summary of this. Uh, does have a big impact in the region. Uh, uh, as you saw in the fact sheet, it was talking about three hundred fifty. Uh, $350,000 of revenue, that's not the money that uh, comes from this program. That's revenue that's generated by air traffic at, at the airport, fueling, car rentals, things like that that go on at the airport that would be lost. And the other, the other major factor, too, is if we don't have a certain number of passengers that fly out of the airport, we reduce the amount of grants that we can uh, received from the FAA, it goes from a million dollars that we're eligible per year now down to 150,000 a year, and that that's a uh, pretty significant amount. Uh, as uh, administrator, she was talking about the T hangers that were going to be built. That's a $700,000 project that we can do in one year because of grant money. Where you know if we had to try saving that. As time went along, it would really be difficult, and it would have um, effects by reducing the money we get for projects for even the uh, non-public flyers like Menards, the other companies that have private planes are flying in and out that get to uh, use advantage of the money for improvement of runways and things like that. So I really hope uh, everyone will support this. Uh, we'll be going to also to the Chippewa County uh, board Nick, I think in two weeks when they meet uh, a similar resolution, uh, I'll be going to their house. Great. Thank you both for the explanations. Any questions uh, for Supervisor Olson or Clark or any discussion or comments before we vote? Any questions or discussion? I see no indication of request to speak. I believe you're ready to vote, so please take your keypad and vote on uh, file number four. And the motion is supporting to support continued funding of the essential air service program uh, here in the U.S. And that motion is adopted unanimously. Uh, moving on to file number five. Authorizing creation of three CCS service facilitator positions, one mental health professional position, and two CCS AODA case manager positions. And I just want to mention in the, uh, on the agenda, it says for human resources, it's not, it's human services department. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I have a motion on that? A motion by Supervisor Conlon, second by Supervisor Miller, and an explanation by Supervisor Clark. We received this request at our meeting on last Friday, and um, this is the uh, CCS program for Human Services, which is a very necessary and very needed <coughs> program dealing with mental, people with mental health issues. And um, there was a state survey a few weeks ago, and uh, Diane Cable, the, the director of Human Services, said that they came very close to receiving a citation from the state because they were short on staff and they needed an AODA person uh, to work in this program, which they did not have. They do not have. And uh, while you look at the costs involved, it's uh, you know, a total of $492,806. I want to assure you that this is not levy. This will come totally from Medicaid reimbursement. And uh, this is a needed program. It's a very successful program. There is a waiting list. We need to get more people in to um, help them. And uh, I urge your support. Thank you for the explanation. Any questions or discussion on this? Uh, Supervisor Pagonis. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm very supportive of these hires. I'm very supportive of the CCS program. I think it's doing a great job. But everyone in this room needs to know that Medicaid is being re-evaluated on a federal level and it's being looked at as uh, potentially block grants. 
So right now we were saying that Medicaid reimbursement and um, there are several departments, the Department of Human Services is one of them, who was able, the CCS program for example is one, that they can actually do a time monitoring and get Medicaid reimbursement. But if things change on a federal level to block grants, it's going to be very, very different for us. So while I'm supportive of this today, we may have to be reconsidering a lot of elements of this based on what happens to the whole Medicaid program. So just, okay. just um, I guess I'm being a Debbie Downer, but I'm supportive yeah. of this program. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Uh, Supervisor DeLuca. Oh, thank you. Um, I guess my uh, question is the same. Um, I'm in favor for it as we have it now, but um, if we don't get this funding in the uh, future, does it then come back to the county to fund those three positions, and will we be responsible for those? I'll ask uh, the administrator to respond to that question. If for any reason the funding were to go away for the CCS program or some other program, it would actually have to go back to the Human um, Services Board for significant discussion because that is the service delivery model. We would not have sufficient levy to actually fund all of the work that is currently being done through those pass-through dollars. And so we would have to seriously look at how we would deliver those services and it would take a discussion not only at the human services level but also at the full board level. Thank you. Supervisor Bates. I'm, I'm grateful for the questions that the other supervisors have raised but certainly this is not the first time that in this county we have gone through episodes where funding was available and funding was not. I guess I would encourage people to be more positive in their thinking <laughs> uh, we certainly have had uh, ex excellent results with this program for earlier intervention, for earlier prevention, and for the types of juvenile services uh, that have simply been beyond our, our reach. If not the county, who? And that's sort of where we are right now. I think we have to look and say that if these services so desperately needed are not provided anywhere else. It is our job in human services to try to find a way, and we would do that. There's no question in my mind that in the past, when the money went away, the positions went away. We would have to find another way to address this. But I think for right now, we would be less than certainly wise if we didn't take advantage of the funding that is there. So I urge your support for this. Thank you. Any other uh, questions or discussion before we vote? Uh, Supervisor Clark. I would like to um, assure the board that this question did come up in committee and we did discuss it at length. And to go along with what Supervisor Bates is saying, we have to act positively. The need is there. And when, when and if, or if and when, Medicaid funding is cut. We will have to deal with the problem in one way or another. And so I continue to urge your support in the approval of this. Thank you very much. Anything else? It appears you're ready to vote, so please take your keypad. The motion in front of us is file number five, authorizing uh, creation of uh, different uh, staff positions in the Department of Human Services uh, as described. And that motion is adopted unanimously. Uh, moving on to file 9. Amending the 1982 official zoning district boundary map for the town of Pleasant Valley. I have a motion please. Motion by Supervisor Leary, second by Supervisor Dunning, and an explanation by Supervisor Gibson. And I know there's a substitute amendment. We've talked about that. But. Yep. Thank you, Chairman Moore. Sure. <clears throat> okay. Originally, this came to planning and development to rezone 10.93 acres and <coughs> two parcels from BP Agricultural Preservation District to A2 Agriculture. And um, that was actually approved by planning and development. Um, the 
Common Pleasant Valley also recommended approval of it. And after, I think it was the next day, the uh, applicant called Planning and Development Department and the lower five acres, which actually has the farm buildings on it, um, asked if it could just stay as AP, Agriculture Preservation, and then he would uh, buy that into a farm consolidation rather than rezoning the parcel, so it actually goes back to Agriculture Preservation. So uh, it's actually a better fit than rezoning that parcel to A2. So I guess I had asked for approval on the substitute amendment for the second half of that. But okay, so there's a, a motion for, on page 49, a substitute amendment number one. Uh, Supervisor Gibson has made that motion. Is there a second to that motion? A second by Supervisor Lavelle. Um, uh, we're not voting on the, 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 ultimately we're voting on right now on the substitute amendment. Now we'll go back to the main motion possibly as amended. Any discussion on the substitute amendment, which was part of the description or explanation just now given by Supervisor Gibson? I, uh, Supervisor DeLuca. Uh, okay, I just want to make sure I understand. Um, so, um, page 48, I think, is the substitute amendment. You're uh, that's about. the fact sheet. Page 48 is the fact sheet explaining okay. Uh, uh, and then uh, 49 is the uh, the substitute amendment number one. Okay, That's so what's before us now. Um, it's saying that they're going to go from AP to A2, correct? No. Su Supervisor Gibson? Yes. That was original. Okay. That was, that was zone agriculture preservation AP to begin with. <coughs> And the request was to rezone that parcel to A2. What the amendment does is it brings it back to AP zoning because A2 was already approved. And um, this was actually court counsel can probably speak to this because it was reviewed by him so that it didn't have to, to make sure that it didn't have to come back to the planning and development committee to put it back into AP agriculture, which it already was originally. Uh, and Keith, you want to add to that? It just threw your mic on. Do you want to confirm that or whatever? Well, the, the question is whether this, this whole process would have to go through another public hearing back to the, the Committee on Planning and Development. In my opinion, it did not have to do that because the end result of this request is that the, um, the request is actually less of a request than it started out to be. Uh, so that, uh, that you can do that by the um, uh, substitute amendment which has been offered by uh, Supervisor Gibson. Okay, and just uh, to, uh, is there anything else there, Supervisor? Yes. Okay, so the original was for 10 acres, and we're saying it's going five acres, A2, correct? Because that's the what original, it says in bold print. The original parcel that was going to be divided into the two different rezonings of A2 was originally AP acres. Okay, so I guess I'm reading in the amendment in bold letters. Said described lands contain five acres to be reclassified from the AP district to the A2. Yeah, each parcel is five acres, roughly. Okay. All right, so five is going to... The original parcel was 10.93 acres. Right. So five is going to A2, and the other um, is staying AP. Staying AP. Just wanted to understand what I was voting. Okay, you. you betcha. And so once again, what's before us is whether to substitute the uh, proposal on page 49 for page 47, which was the original one. So it's a substitute amendment, um, and then we'll vote on the uh, whatever we do on that. So any other discussion on substitute amendment number one? Okay, so let me repeat the motion, and then we'll vote on it. So it's a motion to amend. Uh, uh, with uh, substitute amendment number one there on page 49. So if you please vote on that at this moment. Uh, and then we'll go back to the main motion, either as amended or not amended.
that motion is adopted unanimously. So we're back to the main motion as amended. Uh, discussion, um, any further discussion on, on this um, resolution? Anything else? Okay, uh, I'll repeat the motion and then we'll vote. So the mo it's file nine, the motion is to amend the 1982 official zoning district boundary map to the town of Pleasant Valley as amended by substitute amendment number one. So please vote on that. Bless you. Supervisor Mortimer, if you'd re-vote there, please. Thank you. Take for some reason. Thank you very much. That motion is adopted unanimously. Moving on to file eight. To apply to reapply for a class B intoxicating liquor license for use in the restaurant and lounge at the Chippewa Valley Regional Airport under section Wisconsin Statutes 125.515B2. I have a motion, please. Motion by Supervisor Olson, second by Supervisor Willett, and an explanation by Supervisor Olson. Thank you. This is just uh, state, basically stating that uh, the license there, the restaurant at the airport has to apply to the city for its uh, alcohol license and when uh, the time comes up for the state. So once a year to the city and every two years to the state uh, so that uh, we keep a license uh, at the airport. Thank you for the explanation. Any questions for Supervisor Olson or any discussions on this? Supervisor Clark. I'm just going to play Kellyanne Conway. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't been to Hangar 54, go. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the plug. Uh, anything else? I see none, so if you please take your keypads and vote on file number eight. Uh, the motion is to reapply for a Class B intoxicating liquor license for use at the airport, restaurant, and lounge. And that motion is adopted unanimously. Uh, file number three. Authorizing payment of vouchers over 10000 issued during the month of March 2017. Uh, looking for a motion on this. Motion by Supervisor Gatlin, second by Supervisor Willett. Any discussion on the vouchers this month? I see none. So please vote on file three. Authorizing payment of vouchers over $10,000 issued during the month of March. And that's adopted unanimously. And the last item of business this evening are appointments. Um, you want to read that? Uh, uh, Why don't you just read, read it? Uh, citizen and County Board appointments to select boards, commissions, and councils. You'll find that on pages 78 to 79. Any, uh, may I have a motion? Motion by Supervisor Leary and a second by Supervisor Smyer. Any discussion or questions on those appointments? I see none, so please vote on the various appointments. And that motion is adopted unanimously. We are at the end of our agenda. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Let me just point out, thank you, scouts, uh, for hanging in here. Appreciate it. I hope it was pretty exciting. Yeah, thank you very much. And I would encourage you to mingle with some of the supervisors. Feel free to ask questions. Thank you for being here. Feel free to come back anytime. So, once again, meeting adjourned. Our next meeting is May 2nd. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and Eau Claire County. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.